Hey Pete here. Thanks for joining me today. I want to talk about the subject when the Russian bear dies. It has to do with Bible prophecy. Some people are really getting nervous these days when they think about what's going to happen in the future, in the world, in our country. Not too far down the road, in a few weeks from now, we're going to vote in the United States here for those whom we want to represent us in the government. And whether you realize it or not, this election is a very significant one between those who want to retain what we currently have in a constitutional republic as opposed to those who want to have a socialism or communistic form of government. And um, some people are afraid that Russian communism will take over the world. Others are afraid that Islam will take over the world. Well, I want to tell you up front, they're not going to, but I want to explain to you the best I can from the scriptures, because the scriptures are the final authority, not me. And uh, I realize that there is not total unanimity in those, even amongst those of us who believe that the Lord is going to come back at the time of the rapture, before the time of the tribulation, and the thousand year reign of Jesus Christ. Now, we've shared with you this, this chart that we believe is an accurate um, way of understanding the future. And you can get it simply by going to my website, kelseypeach.com, Understanding the Times. And this is a result, as I've said many times before, uh, it's a result of a literal, normal, historical interpretation of the Bible, grammatical interpretation of the Bible. You see, when the Bible was written, every word, every little jot, every little tittle, as they call it, you know, like a T, a crossing of the T and dotting of the I, all of that was God-breathed. And we do have an accurate uh, translations. We have records of those that were meticulously preserved for us. And so that's why we go to the scriptures to find out what's going to happen. Now, in the understanding of the future, sometimes we have to take uh, portions from this, by, this book and that book, and we have to try to put them all together. And I have uh, a chart that I would be glad to send you in addition to this one if you're interested. And uh, I was listening to a man just the other day, and uh, uh, he he spoke for about an hour, and but I agreed basically with everything he had to say. Uh, we might have a slight difference in reference to what uh, Ezekiel mentions in Ezekiel 38 and 39, where it talks about things that are going to happen in reference to Gog and Magog, which we believe is a reference to uh, Russia. And uh, but so I want to talk about Russia and the allies that it's getting together right now. And I want to talk about the United States. Is it found in Bible prophecy? And um, so we want to talk about that. I want to talk a little bit about Nebuchadnezzar's dream that God gave to him, King Nebuchadnezzar's dream, about 2,600 years ago, and how that relates to us today. And the revived Roman Empire. If the four world empires came into existence as was predicted, and it happened literally, why should we not accept the last part of that, the revived Roman Empire, as being literal as well? Now, we do believe that it's going to happen the way the scripture says it's going to happen. So we want to talk about that. And uh, we also want to talk about uh, uh, the promotion of the Antichrist, what's going to happen right after the church is raptured out of here, that as true Christians are raptured out of here, or taken by force out of here. We want to talk a little bit about uh, Israel's, uh, the Samson, Samson option. And maybe you don't know very much about that, so I want to speak briefly to that. And also the rebuilding of the temple in Jerusalem. Uh, Jerusalem had Solomon's temple and then a, re a rebuilt one, which was destroyed. But there's another one that's going to be rebuilt. Uh, and the Jews have the, have the equipment to do it and the, the building material to do it, and they can do it in very short order. And then also we want to make reference to what's uh, the four horsemen that are mentioned in Revelation chapter 6. And uh, also what's going to happen under the sixth seal judgment uh, that is mentioned in uh, Revelation chapter 6 and verse number 12 and how we believe that this correlates to the time of the middle of the tribulation. So we want to talk about that. And then we also want to talk about why one-fourth of the world's population is going to get wiped out in one of these seal judgments. Um, Three of the ten kings that have promoted the Antichrist to the position of power are going to revolt against him, and he's going to turn on them and destroy them and their nations. And that's when one-fourth of the world's population is going to be decimated. Now, believe it or not, the globalists, and you can they, they come right out and talk about it. They say, well, we have way too many people on planet Earth. 
and they want to reduce the population down to about 500 million people. They say that's sustainable. Over that, we have almost 7 billion people. You think about that, how many people they have to get rid of to have a 500 million population here on Earth. That's almost what, 95% of the population has to be gotten rid of. Will you be one if you're left behind? Well, you need to understand what's going to happen. And then also, uh, uh, what's going to happen in reference to some of these other things? Um, as I mentioned, uh, the mark of the beast, uh, where does that fit in? When does the Antichrist require that of people? Uh, we're going to want to look at that. And then why does he have his image, the image of the Antichrist, set up in the temple by the false prophet? We want to talk a little bit about that. And how God is going to preserve the Jews in the latter three and a half years in a place called Petra. I've been there. It's a bowl-shaped area. And uh, Satan's going to use the elements of rain and water to try to flood out the Jews. But God's going to ma miraculously protect them there. And also, we want to talk briefly. I know this is a lot of subject, but um, I want to refer you, by the way, to the article that I'm going to put that corresponds with this. I have many articles that I've written on Bible prophecy. And I... I'm going to post one that I wrote several years ago, but I've revised it just slightly in light of the current events and to, to try to make it as clear as possible as I can for you so that you'll understand uh, what is going to happen in the future so your, your hearts aren't all worried about everything else. You see, in Revelation chapter 1 and verse number 3, we're told that if we as believers read the scriptures and we study them, we can have a happiness, even though we're not going to be involved in the incidents that take place during the seven years of the tribulation, we can rest at ease because God is still on the throne and he will not forsake his own. We might die in the process, but we cannot lose our salvation. My grandfather, W.B. Peach, uh, I've got a picture of him here, by the way. He used to be on KXCO uh, radio many years out of Waterloo, Iowa, and uh, his theme song was, God is still on the throne, and he will never forsake his own, something like that. My grandmother used to sing that. He had to go in at about 11 o'clock at night out of KXEL. He was heard coast to coast, and this is actually, and a guy in Montana heard him once, and I met him, and he said, uh, W.E. Peach, or Dr. W.E. Peach, your grandfather. I said, yes, he was. And, of course, uh, my wife's dad was on coast to coast radio, as well as my dad in Japan, and his were all held, or heard all over Japan. Uh, I was in Central California, and I don't know how far mine reached when I was back there many years ago. But anyway, uh, we want to talk about this and, and how Hitler wanted to have his thousand-year Reich. Where did he get the idea of a thousand years? And what the globalists are planning to do to bring about peace to this earth without Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace. So these are some of the things I want to talk about and what you need to do to avoid going into this period of time. Now, if you are an unsaved person, and the rapture took place today, which it could. We don't know when it's going to happen, and we do not set dates, but we can certainly see the indicators that are, and the stage being set for the coming of the one world government, the one world religion, and economic system. You, you, if you have to be blind not to see these things happening. And even the things that's happening in the United States are all being orchestrated for things to come. Keep in mind, if you're a Christian, God is still in control. He is sovereign. The devil is not equal in power to God the Father and God the Son and God the Holy Spirit. Only God himself is all-powerful and all-knowing. And he has a plan for the ages. And it's uh, ages and dispensations are not the same thing. Ages precede and follow dispensations. Dispensations are limited to time. But uh, these things are very, very important for us to understand. Now, let's talk about the Russian bear. You know, if you encounter a bear after he's been hibernating for a while, you want to stay away from that bear, especially if that bear is with her cubs. Now, the bear is a personification of Russia, and the eagle, the bald eagle, is an emblem of the United States. Now, interestingly enough, as we've said, Russia is mentioned in the scriptures in Ezekiel chapter uh, 38 and 39. It's called God, Gog of Magog. It's talking about expanse. And, it's, and I, if I had time, I can refer you to another uh, message by one of my former professors who goes into a great deal of detail in this. So if you're interested, uh, you know, just let me know. And by the way, I'd appreciate, I do appreciate so much you and others who are sharing these messages with others because, you know, one of these days when all whom the Father has given to the Son have come to him, we get to go home to that wonderful place that Jesus has been preparing for us for almost 2,000 years. He said, I'm going to go away and prepare a place for all of you. And we believe it's a reference to the New Jerusalem that's mentioned in Revelation chapter 21, verse number 9. 
Jesus isn't married to a, a city. He's married to the people who w will reside in that city. So anyway, uh, God revealed certain things to King Nebuchadnezzar. He said, uh, Nebuchadnezzar had this dream of a man with a golden head, a breast of silver, thighs of brass, legs of iron, and feet, ten toes, with uh, iron and uh, clay, uh, brittle clay. Well, we know that the Babylonian Empire came and went, the Medo-Persian Empire came and went, the Grecian Empire came and went, the Roman Empire fizzled out, but the, re the revived Roman Empire is still going to come in. So if we believe that these empires came and went, and we took them literally, why should we not also believe that the ten toes, referring to the ten kings from the revived Roman Empire that are going to push this one guy into power, the Antichrist, who is going to be the agent of the devil, along with the apostate church. You see, these two agencies, the ten kings from the revived Roman Empire around the Mediterranean Sea, including England, as well as the apostate church, are going to push this man into power. And he's going to, he's going to have to share that power initially with the ten kings, three of which he's going to dispose of quickly, and then later on in the middle of the tribulation, he's going to gain all power over the whole world. And it's going to last for three years, three and a half years. And so we want to talk about that. So anyway, uh, as soon as the church is taken out of here in the rapture, mentioned in uh, John 14, 1 through 3, as well as 1 Corinthians 50, 15, 51 and 52, and 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 through 8, uh, 18, when the church is out of here, there's going to be a vacuum that's created, and the devil always has a man ready and waiting to fill in that gap because chaos is going to ensue shortly after. Look at our world today. Look at all the riots and the mob action, the, the uh, stuff that's happening in our world. If you disagree with somebody, you go out and kill them. Uh, some of those senators that are opposed to certain things, their, their names and their addresses and their phone numbers and social security number are being exposed. I heard the person that did that's in trouble, big trouble right now. But we're in a world in trouble. And when the church and the Holy Spirit, who is the restrainer, is taken out of here at the time of the rapture, this world is going to be in terrible chaos. And my friend, you don't want to be here at that time. Now, it's not the end of the world. The end of this world and the, the universe doesn't take place for at least 1,007 years from today. But that doesn't mean you couldn't die today. And that doesn't mean the rapture might take place and you'd get left behind. You'd go into the tribulation. And the chances of are one and two that you're going to die because that's how many people are going to die, at least in the time of the tribulation. And you don't want to be here at all during that particular time. Now, we uh, understand from Ezekiel chapter 38 and 39 that Russia is clearly presented there. But to my understanding, and I've checked with other Bible uh, prophecy scholars, uh, we do not find direct reference to the United States in the scriptures. There are only two possible places, in my understanding, where there could be a reference to the United States, and that's found in Ezekiel chapter 38, where it talks about the those from Tarshish, or the Ten Isles, referring to England, the young lions that come out of the Ten Isles. Now, I know that some don't see that, but there's a possibility that the young lions that come out of the Ten Isles, which is a reference to England, England where they used to mine tin, he says there's a possibility... Now, I don't say for sure, but it might be somebody from the European revived Roman Empire that this man will come. We don't know. We won't know him, about him, and, to, and it w he won't be identified until uh, after the time of the church is gone here. But there's that possibility. Now, there's one other possibility where you find the United States mentioned in, in Bible prophecy, and that's in Revelation chapter 16, when all the nations of the earth converge in on Israel to try to wipe them out once and for all, and that's called Armageddon the campaign of Armageddon in the book of the Revelation. So if you put all these pieces together, I think it's, it will be helpful for us to understand this and also to live in peace, having the peace of, uh, of God in our lives without getting all bent out of shape and trying to get you know do all these things and manipulate things like uh, some of these... Uh, People who call themselves Christians, the social justice people, or, you know, they, they add to the, the gospel, the social justice gospel that they say you got to do, you know, to usher in the Christ's kingdom. That's not going to happen, my friend. Now, as I mentioned, uh, I, I made mention of the Samson option. Uh, nobody knows, I mean, some people do, but we don't know exactly how much power Israel has. Uh, but they apparently have nuclear, chemical, and biological weapons that they could use, if necessary, 
if they feel like they're they're not going to win. The white is well, might as well take everybody out with him. So it's called the Samson uh, option, where if they get cornered, they let release everything. And I heard recently that they are the seventh or the eighth most powerful uh, nuclear power in the world today. Um, and so I, I just say that to you because this may be one of the things that will be used to tell the people of Israel, okay, you have this, but think of all the people coming against you. You're not going to survive. Well, listen, you want peace. We'll provide this Antichrist that says, I'll provide peace for you, but you have to let me protect you in exchange for your weapons. So apparently they're going to trust this guy. And, um, but that's apparently going to be a big mistake. Now, I, some of this is, is just my thinking, okay? Uh, but I, the rest of this stuff that you can look in this text that I'm going to present to you, I want you to check it out for yourself because what I say doesn't matter if it doesn't line up with the scriptures. You see, I'm not getting any new revelations from God today or new information. No, the scriptures are complete for now. We have everything that we need for life and godliness. We need to study the book, to show ourselves approved to God, a worker who doesn't need to be ashamed, who handles the scripture rightly, rightly dividing it, understanding that God has different rules for different people in different times. Uh, you're never commanded not to eat of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. You don't even have it around. You don't have the tree of the fruit from the tree of life. Uh, you're allowed to eat any kind of um, animal today if you want. You can eat any, any kind if you can pay for it and eat it before it eats you and you can give thanks for it. Uh, you're not restricted on uh, doing work on the Sabbath. Uh, you don't have to offer bloody sacrifices today. And that's what this dispensation chart is trying to point out to people, that we live in different rules today than they did under the Mosaic Law. And if you're trying to come to spiritual maturity by observing the Mosaic Law and then try to impose that on other people, and some of these guys who call themselves Christians say, well, we need to impose the Ten Commandments and all the 600 and some rules upon everybody else in the world. No, that's not what the way it's going to happen in Christ's kingdom, see. And, uh, of course, there is a lot more that we could say about that. Well, this, in Revelation chapter 6, we have four horsemen. We have the white, the red, and then the uh, uh, black horse and the pale horse representing conditions. The white horse represents a false peace. Red horse represents the war that's coming. Then when you have wars, you have famine. When you have famine, you have death. Then in the fifth seal judgment, you have these people who become believers and who, who are opposed to their Gentile people, who are opposed to the apostate church, and they get killed. And uh, this, this sixth seal is not very long. I mean the fifth seal. But the sixth seal deals with the anarchy that's going to take place on the earth as the people of the earth are starving because the seal judgments are coming upon them, while Israel, that little tiny nation, is being protected by the Antichrist because he wants them to worship him because he couldn't get Christ to worship him. So that's his intent. See, So they're in peace and prosperity. They are living in unwalled villages. They have the protection of the Antichrist, not realizing that he's going to turn on them eventually in the middle of the tribulation when he doesn't get his way. So we believe that Revelation chapter 6 in the sixth seal is very interesting because this earthquake that takes place shakes the bird, and I'll just summarize it for you, it shakes the birds of the heaven. Now if you have an earthquake on earth, it doesn't affect the birds that are flying up there, see. But this particular earthquake that's mentioned, we believe, is a reference to a nuclear war that will take place, a nuclear device that will go off in northern Israel when Russia and her allies come against her, and God will allow the Antichrist, believe it or not, to wipe out the Russian armies and their, uh, and their associates, their accomplices. That's going to happen in northern Israel. And you can study this out carefully and correlate it with what you have in the book of Ezekiel and other places, and you can find, as well as Daniel chapter 7, I believe it is, where we're going to find that the nation of uh, Russia, when it comes down on Israel, is going to be uh, resisted by the Western Confederacy and the Antichrist, the man of sin, and he's going to, the Antichrist is going to get killed in the middle of the tribulation. And the thing is, he comes back to life. You can check this out in Revelation chapter 13. He, he has this mortal wound. He dies, but he's resuscitated. And the people who can you fight against this guy? So he, at that particular time, get, gains whole the world power, see. And that's why the seventh seal is silence in heaven, because the first time in all of human history, one man rules the whole world under the control of the anti of the control of the devil, and he has a sidekick called the false prophet. 
And that's what then the trumpet judgments and the, and the bull judgments begin. But we believe that this is the particular time when uh, Russia is destroyed and her allies are destroyed. And that's when the Antichrist who has been resuscitated back to life. You can check this out in Matthew 24, verse 15 and follow. It says, you Jews in Judea, you better head out of there as fast as you can and head down to the mountains south of you there to a place called Petra. It's also referred to in Isaiah chapter 16 as, as um, Petra and what's the other? Selah. Uh, that's the place. I've been there. It's a bull type area. And we're told in Revelation chapter 12 that as the Jews are fleeing down there, the devil is going to take control of the weather. He's going to cause a flood that's going to try to wipe them out. And God's going to cause the earth to open up so that it swallows that water, keep the Jews preserved there during the last three and a half years. As the devil tries to wipe out the Jews who wouldn't bow down to him in the temple there where they have been sacrificing things. And you see, when the abomination of desolation is set up in the temple, the Jews are told to get out of there as fast as they can. So that's what you have there. So, uh, as I mentioned, uh, in the early part of uh, Revelation chapter 6, when the three kings oppose the Antichrist, who's, who apparently comes from mixed blood. Now, you can check this out in the book of Daniel chapter 2, verses uh, 43, as well as chapter 7, verse 24. Apparently, he is somebody with mixed blood from... Uh, there's only one race, but there, he might be somebody from a mixed blood. And so they think, well, who is this little pipsqueak? See? And three of the kings of the ten kings oppose him, and he gets mad at him and wipes him out. See? Now you can check this out in the book of Daniel. But you have to put all these pieces together. And I'm not saying what I'm telling you is inspired. No, only the word of God is. I'm just trying to put the pieces together so that you will understand what I believe, at least what I'm thinking. Now, you know, uh, the only thing that's really crucial is what we believe as far as how do we get saved. You may not agree with me. You may have a totally different perspective, but there's one thing upon which we must agree, and that is the, the gospel message and the way of salvation. The gospel message is that Christ died for our sins, was buried, and rose again on the third day. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ exclusively, and you'll be saved. That's the Christ of the, of the scriptures, not the Christ of the cults. See, that's what it takes. Now, let's go on here. Now, he crushes. Now, as a result of this, as I mentioned, famine is going to take place. Russia is going to come down on them and try to, you know, it's, it's coming for food. Uh, now, in the process of coming down there, if you look at Ezekiel chapter 38 and 39, they're also, their primary uh, objective is to get food. They're hungry, see. But they're also going to take the gold and other things that are there as part of the booty that comes from going to war. So we believe that this is that what's going to happen in the middle of the tribulation. And also at the middle of the tribulation, he's going to require that everybody take on their right hand or their forehead his number, the mark of the beast, without which you will not be able to buy, sell, or trade. Uh, and it's, it's going to be a very horrific time. I was listening to this preacher the other day, and he said, uh, suppose you, took, you wanted to buy a car and you took uh, money in cash to the dealer. They'd say, well, this must be dirty money. You see, they're hardly dealing with cash anymore. They're trying to get rid of it in a cashless society. And that's, you know, even people today, and I think in Wisconsin, they have these things put in their, their hand, these little chips or, you know, grain, rice size things put in their hand. Well, something like that's going to happen in the future where we'll have complete domination and control over people. Look at your phone. Uh, every time you pick up your phone, even if you don't, aren't doing stuff, they have ways of tracking you. Uh, we live in a technological society, my friend, and you need to wake up if you're not awake and stop fooling around with stuff that's of no va eternal value. Now, as I mentioned, since, Je uh, since the devil could not get Jesus to bow down to him when Jesus was here on earth, he's going to try the next thing. And because see, if he can wipe out the Jews, if he can get them to worship him rather than the true God, then he's going to win a battle. But he's not going to be able to do that because when the abomination when this image is set up of him in the temple the jews are going to flee and they're not going to take the mark of the beast they've learned that and in fact in ezekiel chapter 38 i believe it is or 38 39 i don't know the exact reference right now in my back of my mind but uh they're not going to defile god's name they're not going to take that mark of the beast for which they're going to be persecuted and he's going to try to wipe them out of existence now as i mentioned since since these four world empires have gone, come and gone, why should we not also believe that the future coming world empire, which will be governed by the Antichrist, the man of sin, and his sidekick, 
the false prophet, a Jew. The Antichrist will be a Gentile. But they're both governed by the devil. And the devil's going to try to use this period of time to get the Jews to worship him. And they're not going to do it. And God is going to miraculously preserve the Jews in the wilderness. And at the same time, weed out those who will not believe that Jesus is the promised Messiah. You see, in uh, Philippians chapter 2 and verse number 11, there's coming a day when every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is who he said he is, the God-man. Now, you, you can do that now, and you can trust in Christ as your Savior now, but if you do it, you know, without trusting him as your Savior, you know, it's, everybody's going to admit that. But that doesn't mean everybody's going to get saved. Universalism, that's not taught in the Scriptures. Now, don't buy you know, William Paul Young and others are teaching about universalism, the shack. If you're, you know, a band of that stuff, he's, he's teaching a false doctrine. And many of people are following that. And I hope you're not one of them. But uh, it says many Christians are going to be misled by false teachers and false prophets who say, well, I got this, re you know, the Lord told me to tell you to send in money for me, see. Uh, and usually they're charlatans. So anyway, uh, we know from Scripture that even as President H.W. Bush uh Old, the older Bush, he when he became president, he talked about the new world order. We can establish a new world order. Well, that's what the people of earthlings want to do. And God's going to allow it in time. Now, we don't know whether it's going to be immediately. You know, things could cha change dramatically, my friend, in this coming election. And, uh, you know, it's all part of God's big plan. God is not up there, oh, I wonder what the Americans are going to do. You know, he's not worrying about that at all. And in fact, those who shake their fist at God, according to Psalm chapter 2, he just laughs. You crazy little ant. What do you think you can do with me? You know, like the ant to the elephant. You know, well, God isn't an elephant, you know, but people shake their fist at God. In fact, when they're suffering all this suffering in the tribulation time, rather than pleading to God for mercy, they shake their face and they blaspheme God, say, who are you to do this to us? See? And uh, so... It's going to be a time when God rescues the nation of Israel. He's going to start dealing with them when, as soon as the uh, agreement is signed between the Antichrist and the Jewish people, that's when God's time clock starts up. Right now, the church is the chosen ones. They are the chosen ones. Israel has been temporarily set aside, but God has not abandoned them forever. Look at uh, Romans chapter 9, 10, 11. Has God forsaken his people? No, he has not. He's going to deal with them in the future, but he's not dealing with them right now. And Jews, if they want to be saved today, they must believe in the Lord Jesus Christ who died for their sins, was buried and rose again. They have to believe in the deity of Christ. That's the Jews' big problem. And maybe you're a Jew watching me right now. You need to acknowledge the fact that he is Lord. He is God. Uh, he is Jesus, the God-man. He is the Christ, the anointed one, the resurrected, glorified one who currently sits at the Father's right hand, waiting for the time when the last person whom the Father has given to the Son have come to him and been saved. Then the Father will instruct the Son, go down and get your bride. Now, does that mean that after that people won't be saved? No, there'll be many, many, many people that are saved in the tribulation, but it's going to be really hard for them. And there are going to be people in the millennium, the thousand-year reign of Jesus Christ, that are going to be saved. But if you want to be part of the body of Christ, which is the church that becomes Christ's bride, now is the time of salvation. And if you reject Jesus Christ as your Savior, the likelihood of your doing that after the church is gone is very, very nil. Um, you're going to believe the lie of the Antichrist, that man can become a god. See, that's, in essence, what evolution is teaching. You know, what the educational system in our, in our public school system, all around the world, they say, you know, you can become a god. And they misunderstand what um, the devil through the serpent said to Eve. You can become like God in one area, knowing the difference between good and evil. Man cannot become a God. You know, I, um, you know, I like what somebody said, you know, as uh, God is, so man's, uh, you know, how does it go? The, the Mormons teach it, you know, but we are not going to become gods. The people in some of the Eastern religions believe that, you know, in their parents that they become gods. No, we don't become gods. There is one God, only one God, who exists in three persons, God the Father, God the Holy Spirit, Son and Holy Spirit, and they all share the same essence, the same attributes. And it is in Jesus Christ that your faith must be resting, not in the Christ of the cults, if you want to be saved. Now, I realize I've covered a lot of material with you here today, but I want to encourage you, I'm going to, and Lord willing, I'll put this on as soon as I can, to let you go to the site where I have this written down. And there's a lot of scriptures with it, and I've added some since writing that a couple, three years ago, on my uh, website, my blogs, 
And I would encourage you to go to my website. It's just kelseypeach.com. If you like this dispensation chart, just click on Understanding the Times. If you'd like other materials that are more detailed about things to come, uh, write to me. If you have questions or comments or disagreements, let me know. Um, but I appreciate your pushing like and share so that we can get this message out because the sooner we get all those whom the Father has given to the Son, we've, they've come in and you're the, you and I are the instruments to do that by sharing the gospel, like gospel tracts. A guy came by to blow up uh, my grass lines yesterday, my water line, uh, he's a Spanish guy, and I gave him one of these. You, know, so you can get these and get them in English and get them in all kinds of languages. But if you're a your right relationship to the God, you have your known sins confessed, and you're dependent on the Holy Spirit, be a good witness for him. If you're a carnal Christian, get right with God. If you're not saved, get saved. Because now is the day of salvation. You don't have any guarantee that you're going to be alive tomorrow, my friend. And so, my friend, um, we appreciate your praying for us. Uh, our purpose is to glorify God by making him known to as many people as we can, as the Holy Spirit leads us. We want to share with him the good news in his clarity, not by confusing it. As Ron Shea talks about it in this booklet here that you can get and read the bad news and the good news. On the very first page, he talks about all the things that people are told to do in order to be saved. And maybe you have fallen into that area. Maybe you think you're saved and maybe you're not. Or maybe you just don't have assurance of your salvation. We're here to help you. Okay? So, um, appreciate you praying for us. And we, ex we desire God's best for you as you are obedient to him and his word. This is Kelsey Peach, signing out.